since 2013, Pope Francis, in many of his teachings, encyclicals, apostolic letters, homilies, would always use the word inclusive, inclusive. And this has taken many of the bishops and the priests taken by surprise because the mindset of the church then was more of exclusivity. We are exclusive, tayo lang. In fact, we have the teaching outside of the church. There is no salvation. No? So it was very exclusive. And here comes Pope Francis, drawing from the spirit of Vatican II, which is openness to the world, now reminds us that the church, that Catholics must have a heart that includes everybody. And the Pope gave some reason. He said, first and foremost, foremost we're all created by God. And God is our Father. We are His children. And God, a good Father, never rejects anyone. No. Actually, we are the ones who reject God, not God. We turn away from God. God does not turn away from us. No. So Pope Francis reminds us that we're also, as church, the people of God. The people, not just the baptized, but those who may not be baptized yet long to be in communion with the church. Or to men of goodwill, men with good thoughts, good hearts. They may not know Jesus, but they live according to their consciences. They follow the dictates of their conscience, doing what is good, what is noble, and what is true. Certainly, they're also entitled to the kingdom of God. So Pope Francis reminds us that inclusivity is very important, especially during these divisive times. During these times wherein people, even leaders, are very fond of putting divide among the peoples. And look around us. Look all throughout history, even at this present stage, there is so much division. And sadly, very often, this divide is expressed in terms of discrimination, racism, denigrating other people, outmost disregard for human rights looking down at people. So there are so many expressions today you know, that tend to divide people, that tend to say, you do not belong with us. Kami lang, kayo. But you know, Pope Francis is not original because Jesus, when he came, he said, I have come to unite all. There will be one sheepfold, one shepherd. And today's gospel speaks to us precisely of that inclusiveness. Historically, we know very well that the Jews has, have a mindset that God, the great God, is only theirs. They are the chosen race. They're the chosen race. Salvation can only be theirs. And that is why they look down on the outsiders. They are called pagans. Or in Hebrew, they're called goyim. And they use two animals to express, to denigrate those who are not part of their group. They are dogs and swine. Dogs and pigs. So they tend to divide because they feel that God who revealed himself in history is just their God. And when they enter the promised land, 
They have seen other tribes with their own idols, with their own gods. And they condemned them. And they said, there is only one God, and this God is ours. If you want to experience this God, then be one of us. So for the Jews at the time, the prophecy of Elijah of Isaiah was a scandalous, was shocking. Because the prophet Isaiah was talking of a God who will welcome foreigners. A God who will welcome these foreigners unto his temple. And so that his house will be a house of prayer for all, for everybody. Did not Jesus say the same when he dialogued with the Samaritan woman? A time will come that everybody will worship him, not in that place or in this place, no, but in the new temple of God. So that was the mindset, exclusivity. And here comes Jesus. Encountering this woman, she teaches us this lesson of inclusivity. God's mercy includes all. Inclusiveness is the language of God's mercy. Jesus, you know, has all the reason to reject the request of the woman. First, she was a woman. And at that time, the Israelites looked down on women. They are second-class citizens. In fact, their testimony is not accepted in court. No? Talagang agrabyado ang kababaihan, kababaihan nung parahong iyon. No? Yet Jesus entertained her in the manner that Jesus entertained the Samaritan woman. Second, she is pagan. She's a pagan. No? She's not a believer. Yet she was daring to come and approach Jesus. And third, she's a Canaanite. You know, when the Israelites entered the Promised Land, they fought so many tribes. The Amorites, the Jebusites, Nebusites, so many, including the Canaanites. So they are mortal enemies. Mortal enemies. In fact, Jesus did not enter the territory who walked along the border. Because he knew that they were enemies. Yet we see Jesus now listening, entertaining to this enemy. No. What must have been? What could have been the reason why given these three reasons that Jesus had all the reasons not to entertain the woman, nonetheless, he opened his heart, spent some time, and eventually even granted the woman's request. Also three reasons. First, mother's love. The woman loved her daughter. And you know, a mother's love cannot take no for an answer. A mother's love only wants yes. And so Jesus must have seen the tremendous love of this woman for her daughter. That she dared, she risked to be rejected, ostracized as the apostles wanted to send her away. Yet she persisted because of her love for her daughter. Second reason must have been her faith. She acknowledged Jesus, Lord, you are the son of David. You have the capacity to help me. I have seen you do it. I may not be a Jew or Israelite, but my eyes can see what marvelous things you have been doing. And marvelous things are done by good persons. Persons affected, influence, and carries the power of God. So I believe that you can do something. And the third reason is, makulit yung babae. Makulit. You know, God loves holy kulit. Hindi ibang klaseng kulit. 
nung para sa Pisa ko, we translate kulit as articulate, di ba? Nung para sa Pisa sa Manila, ang dami kong parishioners, articulate, maarte na, makulit pa. You know? But this kind of kulitation <laughs> is something acceptable to Jesus because it flows from a need, honest need, real need. She begs Jesus to heal her daughter. And so she persisted. And we have seen this happening a lot. So many parents persisting, struggling, fighting all sorts of problems and difficulties to be able to give a bright future to their sons and daughters. Parents sacrificing, flocking into the church, must you make COVID? Mas kami ang protocol. They stand before the church. They pray. Mas kibaraming restrictions. No? And at this moment, you are not just the ones following or participating in this Mass. There are many watching us, participating in us. Because you are moved by that desire to raise our prayers to God. And Jesus must have felt that. That this woman with a mother's love and the faith and now persevering and humble in her longing deserves a yes for an answer. And Jesus did the miracle. He did the healing. Actually, the center of this drama, my brothers and sisters, is not so much the Canaanite woman it's not so much the apostles or the disciples or the daughter who is sick. The focus of this encounter is the goodness of God seen in the person of Jesus. Jesus opened his heart to manifest that all who longs, who cries out from the deepest deep of their hearts, all those who beg mercy from God, all those who pray in all sincerity from the heart, God can never close his heart. His heart is always open to the simple, to the humble, to those who cry in need. And that is the God we have, the God that Jesus is telling us, a God of love love is always open love is always receptive love is always ready to share and be shared the lesson we can get directly my brothers and sisters from this beautiful encounter is a call to remind us of the tremendous love and mercy of God towards us We are reminded to pray perseveringly. We are reminded to be humble. And we are reminded to have a heart that is receptive, to be open to God. And at the same time, a heart that is open to the needs of others. Meron kasi yung mga taong ganun. They beg God, they ask God for blessings, for graces, for miracles. And once they have received these blessings, their hearts the man, are closed to those who ask or beg from them. That should not be the way we should live our Christian life. We have received countless blessings from God. God very often overlooks, so to say, our failures, our sinfulness. He is quick to give us mercy and forgiveness. He's fast to embrace us, to make us feel the warmth of His love. And we can hear His whisper saying, Do not worry about your sinfulness. You belong to me. You are my child. You are my son. You are my daughter. And I'm your father who do not reject you. We welcome this beautiful gift, this lecture reading from the gospel and we pray that it will give us a certain deep sense of hope 
deep sense of hope that our God is a God of love who includes us in his fold and who desires that we may be included in his kingdom. Amen.